The concept of distance holds significant importance in modern mathematics and continues to be a fundamental concept. It plays a crucial role in various branches of mathematics, including geometry, analysis and topology, and its influence extends even further into the computer science, physics, economics, data analysis, and so on. The study and understanding of distance continue to shape mathematical theories, provide insights into the structure of spaces, and so on. So here in this lecture, we'll dig deeper into the fundamentals of distance and how can we derive all the properties of distance and extend them to a more generalized notion. How are the metric and metric spaces defined? And how does the concept of vectors makes a difference from a point and play a crucial role in all these things, as well as how we can reflect the concept of distance in the space of vectors and generalize it. On top of that, what if we upgrade the dimension? Imagine you have a dot somewhere along the real line. You can think it as a point which has some static position on the real axis. The point has some value with respect to the origin and the unit defined on the real axis. To represent that static position, two different points represent two different static positions on the real axis. That's how all the points having different static positions are different. But neither a point can be added to a similar point, nor can it be scalar multiplied. But if we add some condition on these points, like direction and distance, where the direction is right or left with respect to the origin and distance defined from the origin to the point measured according to the unit length simply represents a vector pointing from the origin to the point on that direction. Here is how both magnitude and direction a vector has. One important thing is here the vectors have magnitude and direction but no position and they may be placed in a space wherever it is convenient and most importantly vectors can be added and scalar multiplied. Here while the direction of a vector appears to be pretty simple, what about the distance between two points representing vectors? Suppose we have two vectors on the real axis, x and y, where the vector x is represented by the point placed x unit away from the origin on right and the unit length is the length of that segment between the origin and the unit. The concept is same for the vector y also. Yet the unit length can also be described as the distance between the origin and the unit. Now what's the distance between x and y? Again suppose we represent the distance between x and y as t of x, y. And you can see it clearly that it doesn't matter whether we measure it from x to y or y to x. It will simply be the difference between the distances from y to the origin and from x to the origin. Whereas we represent them as d of 0 y and d of 0 x respectively. Yet the distance between x and y 
and the distance between the origin and x together gives us the distance between the origin and y and that's how we get the relation as d of 0x plus d of xy is equal to d of 0y which further implies that d of xy is equal to d of 0y minus d of 0x from where we can deduct the result that d of xy is equal to y minus x and since we can alternate the position between x and y to get the same value of the distance between them therefore we can conclude the distance will be mod of x minus y or mod of y minus x and here in this case whatever the result is it's always greater than zero now let's have a deeper look at the distance between two points like what's the distance between a point from itself and also what can you say if the distance between two points be zero so without loss of any generality let's consider the distance between x and y be 1 now you can simply visualize that if the point x approaches y then the distance between those two points approaches to zero in other words less the distance between two points be more closer the points are to each other and vice versa and the distance between two points varies continuously with respect to their respective positions in the next lecture series we will discuss how the distance as a function between two points be continuous on those two points taking as variables in fact the continuity be uniform but here we can see how the continuous motion of the point x along the real line affects the distance between x and y and we can simply conclude that the distance between the points x and y tends to zero when x tends to y Now if we want to go a little bit deeper again and want to find out some other properties of distance in a large context as well we'll add one additional point to find it out So what if we add one more point to this system Yeah if we add one more point in this system we can find out the distance between each pair of elements and if the length of the line joining each pair of points determines the distance then it forms a triangle and will obviously will be the triangle inequality suppose the sides of the triangle are capital x y and z which are exactly opposite to the points small x y and z respectively on this triangle again suppose theta 1 be the angle between the lines y and z and theta 2 be the angle between the lines x and z now let's try a vertical projection line of the point z onto the line z which divides the line z into two segments one is the projection of the line y along z another is the projection of the line x along z which are y cos theta 1 and x cos theta 2 respectively we know that the value of cosine lies in between minus 1 and 1 which eventually gives us z to be less than or equal to y plus x and the visual verification of y cos theta 1 is less than or equal to y 
can simply be done by constructing a circle of radius y cos theta 1 centered at x which eventually reflects the fact that the orthogonal projection of any line is smaller than the line itself and we'll discuss about the projection in further details later here we have g is less than or equal to y plus x which eventually implies distance between x and y is less than or equal to the sum of distances between x and z and z and y and we can check it visually by considering z in some different places And this is a very important property of distance, which states if we have three points x, y, and z, then d of x, y is less equal to d of x, z plus d of z, y for all x, y, and z. And this property is called the triangle inequality. Some other properties of distance are symmetry which states that d of x y is equal to d of y x for all x and y and non-negativity which is d of x y is greater than equal to zero for all x and y so here d of x y gives us the distance between two points x and y or suppose x is in capital X, the domain where the function d is defined, and y is from the same domain also. That is, d takes two points, x and y, from the same domain, x, and gives us a non negative real functional value as a distance between those two points. That is, d is a map from x cross x, the Cartesian product between x and x itself, to r. And here, x together with the function d is called the metric space. And the function d maps x cross x to r satisfies these following three conditions. And conversely, if any such defined function satisfies all these conditions is called the metric and the domain together with the metric is called the metric space. The idea of metric and metric spaces are abstraction of the concept of distance and Euclidean space. For example, if we define the distance between two points by d of x, y, where x and y are in the set of all real numbers r, then d is a metric on r, and r and d is a metric space. But what if we upgrade the dimension? <laughs> 